Hey everyone, welcome back to Weld.com. So today's episode four of Welding Defects. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, go ahead, camera guy's gonna put a link up here. Uh, go ahead, check those videos out so you can learn about the other discontinuities and how to fix them. Now you may notice there's a lot of extra noise going on in the shop today. We're actually uh, making some shop improvements. We got some cool stuff from Fabtech. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification. That way you guys won't miss out on any episodes and you'll see exactly what we're bringing into the shop. But let's go ahead and get into today's episode. We're talking about welding defects. Uh, this will be the last in the series. The first one we're gonna talk about is unequal leg length. So let's get into it. For the first half of this weld, I'm gonna go ahead and do everything correctly. I'm gonna maintain a 45 degree work angle, meaning my electrode's essentially gonna bisect the, the vertical and horizontal coupon here. So I wanna make sure I get equal leg length or equal weld on the vertical and the horizontal piece or the flat piece. I'm gonna maintain about a 10 degree travel angle meaning the, the end of the electrode is leaning from the left to the right because I'm right-handed, that's the direction I'm traveling. About halfway through here, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the same travel angle, but I'm gonna adjust my work angle, and I'm really gonna exaggerate this so it, it should turn out well on camera. And basically, I'm just gonna hold about a 10 degree work angle. Uh, what I'm trying to do here, what I'm trying to achieve is show you unequal leg length. So once we're done with this, I should have much more weld on the bottom plate than I do on the top. Now mind you, you want to maintain 50% of the weld on the vertical plate and 50% on the horizontal plate unless it's specified in the welding symbol. Sometimes it, they, you know, it calls out for unequal leg length. Okay, so for about the first half of this coupon, I maintain that 45 degree work angle and I got pretty equal leg length. So I got 50% on the vertical plate, 50% on the horizontal, everything was good. Right about this point right here is when I went ahead and changed that position, changed that work angle. Now you'll notice that I have more weld on the horizontal plate down here than I do on the vertical. It's roughly 75% of the weld is on the, uh, the horizontal plate and about 25 is on the vertical plate. That would not be acceptable if you were trying to, you know, if that weld was just drawn out for like a 3 16th fillet weld, okay? Because the, the size is just not proportionate. You wanna maintain 50% on each piece of the material that's what's gonna make a good weld. Like I said before, there are some cases where it'll call out on the print unequal leg length and they will actually give you the sizes in that weld symbol. Let's go ahead and move on to non-uniformity. Okay, so you can see I started off normal, just like you should. And I, made, I got that 3 16th bead profile that I was looking for. And then it kind of drops down to a quarter. Now what happened here is I increased my travel speed. And then I recognized it, so I slowed down again, got back up to that 3 16th. And then I got distracted and sped up again, down to a quarter, and then back up to a 3 16th, and left a nice little crater in the end here that really has nothing to do with this discussion. But always make sure to fill in your craters. That's another uh, weld defect. So what you want to do to avoid this, prop yourself up on something, get comfortable, get relaxed, do a dry run, make sure that your cable's not gonna get caught on something. Uh, I mean, that's just gonna keep you in position and comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're gonna kind of speed through that weldment uh, in order to get done faster. Another thing you can do, especially if you're just starting out, is you're welding at roughly one inch every six seconds. So if you were able to mark this out, and you can do this with a uh, soapstone or a Mark All Pro or you know, whatever the case may be, just put you a couple marks in there, measure it out every one inch. So what you wanna do is you wanna start counting. So you know, you're gonna start here on your left, move to the right if you're right-handed. Uh, if you're left-handed, just reverse everything. And you're gonna count, and you're gonna count up to six seconds, and at the six second mark, you should hit here. Okay, now if you're past that mark, in, you know, part way into the other inch mark at six seconds, that tells me you're going too fast. So just run those out, it should take about six seconds per inch to do that, and like I said, I would measure it out instead of eyeballing. Uh, go ahead, get you a tape measure and mark it out. Now, this is just for practice, but it'll, it'll give you a good, consistent, you know, profile to, uh, to weld to. All right, so that's non-uniformity. Let's go ahead and talk about our next defect, which is um, underfill. Very common, uh, very easy to fix. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so off camera, we went ahead and ran a regular uh, SMAW test in the 1G position. So that means flat groove weld for those of you that are new to the channel. What we did is we stopped prematurely, so we stopped before we got to flush uh, on this plate to show you exactly what underfill is. Now, underfill is probably one of my favorite weld defects because if the uh, 
if you still have the opportunity, all you have to do is just fill that in. So you can also have underfill on your cap pass. We'll probably show you a little bit of, um, a little bit of that because we're going to go ahead and cap this off to show you how you would correct this. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the plate down and show you that we're below flush. Okay, so right here I'm flush. Now, AWS is going to allow me to be flush to an eighth inch above my material for three eighths plate on a, on a cap. So that's, your, that's what's referred to as your weld reinforcement. Anything over an eighth, I'm disqualified. Anything below flush, I'd be disqualified. So if we move down here, you can see that I'm below flush. Now this gauge that I'm using is a bridge cam gauge from Gal. We've done uh, videos in the past with it, if you want to refer back to them. But I just want to show you that we're under here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill this and correct the defect. Because as of right now, as an inspector, I couldn't pass this plate. Not just because it's, it's my plate, but because of the fact that I have underfill on here. And that would be an automatic disqualification on this plate. So we'll show you how to remedy that. All right, so to eliminate your underfill, it's relatively easy. All you have to do is just continue to weld on it until you break that surface and you're either flush to an eighth inch, or uh, eighth inch above. And as you can see, everything is above flush which is where I want it. So everything's good. It's above flush, but below an eighth of an inch. One thing I do want to point out, right in this area over here, I left this intentionally because one of the biggest problems I often see, especially when I was teaching, is the students don't utilize the runoff tabs. The run-on and run-off tabs are probably some of the most important pieces on your test plate, but they're also the most underutilized. Okay, people think once I get to the done or once I get to the end, I'm done, you know, and that's simply not the case. Because what am I left with over here? Underfill. Okay, if I would have utilized that runoff tab and, and transferred all the way through to the end, I would have the same amount of weld buildup right here at the end of the coupon as I do throughout the rest of the, uh, the rest of the weldment. Okay, so make sure to utilize those runoff tabs. Like I said, probably one of the most important pieces of the coupon, but often, often underutilized. Put them there, they're there for your benefit, right? So you can see right there, I mean, I'm, I'm a good eighth inch below where I need to be, okay? All right, everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you are able to take something away from it. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about any of the stuff you're doing at the house or at work, running into different discontinuities depending on the process, go ahead and post your questions down there in the, uh, the comment section. We'll do our best to get back to you. Again, thanks for watching. We really appreciate the support. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we'd love to do so much. Uh, and then make sure if you want to hear uh, about different weld discontinuities, click this little box up in here. That should link you back to our other weld discontinuity videos. And until next time, make every weld better than your last.